In this video segment, we're going to take a look at placing wainscot for a stairway. I'm going to take two approaches, one with a raised panel and then one with an inset panel. As you can see in this photograph, we have a raised panel and this photo just shows a simple beadboard with a top rail, maybe an inset panel on this photo, and then finally a couple of inset panels. Let's go ahead and go into the program and take a look beginning with a raised panel. In this plan, I've placed a simple set of L stairs. There's no railing at the wall, and I've created a back clip cross-section camera. Let me double click and open the camera. I'm going to begin the process by drawing a series of CAD lines to create the shape and the dimensions that I need for the wainscot. Using the line tool, I'm going to come down and I'm going to actually click on the nosing of the stair to get the right angle. And then I'm going to adjust that just above the stringer you see in the uh, elevation view. Release and adjust this line so that it goes down to the molding at the bottom. Click on the end of that line segment, pull it down to the casing. And now I'll go ahead and pull that up to the stringer. Using the diamond on the end of that line, I'll just go ahead and extend that over to the wall. Now I'm going to make two copies of this line using the copy tool down here in the lower edit menu. I'm going to go ahead and slide this up exactly 42 inches. If you're using Chief Architect Premier, you can actually press the tab key while you're holding your left mouse button down and sliding this up. And when I press the tab key, I can actually come in here and set my dimension. In this case, this is going to be the top portion of the wainscot on the molding at 42 inches. One more copy, and this is just going to be used as a guideline. I'm going to go ahead and pull this down. This is going to be the midpoint for my wainscoting that I use for snapping. Again, press the tab key, and I'm going to set this at 21 inches, so this is going to be the midpoint for my wainscot. And then finally, I'm going to draw one more temporary line off the midpoint down here. And again, this is just going to be used to help me center some of the objects I needed to draw for the wainscot paneling. Now let's take the upper line while it's selected and down in the lower edit menu I'm going to use this tool called convert to a polyline. I'm going to actually use a 3D molding polyline. There's a molding polyline right above it that's grayed out and they're both the same tool. The difference is, is you can assign a molding to both and a 3D molding polyline is one that is not horizontal. So in this case we have some vertical rise to it and that's the difference between a molding polyline and a 3D molding polyline. The next dialog that appears, you can see in the 3D view or the elevation view that it automatically assigned a basic flat square molding to it. I'm going to come over to the moldings panel and I'm going to actually replace that default and browse out to the library and let's find a different molding profile. So underneath the architectural moldings, I'm just going to come down here to the chair rail. I'm going to choose the CRO2 molding. And in this case, let's go ahead and set the dimension of it to be 2 inches by a half inch. And in this case, it's always going to be extrude inside the polyline. And then that'll assign that molding profile to that edge. Now we've established the upper portion of the rail for the wainscot. The next component I want to draw is the, actually the paneling that will go behind this. You can think if you're just going to do a simple paneling for your wainscot, in this case in the photo for the beadboard below that top rail, I'm going to use a polyline solid to do this. You could also maybe use the backsplash tool, but the, the polyline solid is going to be a little bit more flexible, and I'll go ahead and draw that out in the elevation view. Using the polyline solid, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick up a snap off the top of that rail on the other side, and I'm going to draw it down to the landing component on this stairway here. And now I'm going to use the number three on the keyboard to create a break on one of the edges over here, and another number three on the keyboard and a break on the edge over here. And then I'm going to just shape that down the stairway, and we'll create a snap down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this extra diamond and we'll pull that down and create a snap right in this area as well. Once I have that shaped, I'm going to double click on it and then I'm going to set the thickness of this to be an eighth of an inch thick. Of course you can set that to whatever thickness you want for your paneling, but in the case of with my raised molding I'm going to set this to be a fairly thin panel set. And then using the material eyedropper I'm going to pick up the color off of the stairway itself and apply it onto the paneling. Now if you browse out to the library, you could actually find something like that beadboard we were looking at in the photo. And if I search on beadboard, come in, find your beadboard, you can now apply that onto the paneling itself and maybe you're done with the uh, wainscoting. Let me undo that and close the library. I actually want to use a smooth paneling and come in here and draw some raised panels that will follow the stairway up and then finally 
put a raised panel above that landing. Now I'm going to draw one more line just along the casing in here. Let's use the line tool, pick up a snap off of the edge here, and I'm just going to draw a temporary line that goes right down the casing. And one more line that's going to begin the raised panel, and I'm going to set this using my temporary dimensions to be about six inches off of the casing. If I select the line, Using the temporary dimension, I'm just going to come in here. I may have to zoom in to get this temporary dimension. I'm going to set this line to be six inches off of that casing. And this is going to begin the forming for the wainscot. And roughly I want the wainscot to be 32 inches high and 18 inches wide. I'm going to go ahead and open up this line by double clicking on it and I'm going to set the length of it to be exactly 32 inches in length. And then we'll go ahead and pull the extra diamond up and I'm going to make that parallel here in just a second. Let's go ahead and pull this down. Again, if you're using Chief Architect Premier, you can actually press the tab key while you're doing that and I can type in an exact dimension. In this case, I also want this to be 32 inches and then we'll go ahead and connect the last segment and you should actually get a closed polyline. Set this to be parallel. I'm going to select the bottom edge, use the Make Parallel tool. You'll find that down here in your lower edit menu. I'm going to make that parallel to that bottom line that I drew and then I'm going to do the same thing on the upper edge. Select the upper edge, use the Make Parallel tool, and again click that same line, and now it's exactly parallel. The overall width for this, I want it to be exactly 18 inches, so let's go ahead and type that in. And now using the guideline that we drew in the middle of the stairs, I'm going to use my Snap tool, and I'm going to actually create a snap right on that edge. Now that I know it's exactly centered, let me turn off my temporary dimensions over here using the same tool that I converted the upper rail to a 3D molding polyline. I'm going to use that same tool down here in the edit menu. Convert to a polyline and I'm going to choose that it's a 3D molding polyline and then we'll browse out find the exact same molding profile. Let's replace the default square profile with the same one and that was underneath the chair rail and I believe we use CR02. We'll set the dimension of it to be two inches by half inch. In this case it's extrude inside and let's go ahead and close it. Now you see that profile on the first raised panel for the wainscot. The next thing I want to do is I want to create two copies of this going up the stairway and I'm going to go ahead and remove this tool. It's an off angle tool. Notice that it says angle snap so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. You want to make sure you turn it on because if you're using this and you're trying to draw your walls or other things, it's not going to be on typical angles like 90 degree angles that are typically used. And I want to be able to make two copies of this. Let's go ahead and use the multiple copy tool and let's select the interval. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the button down here that says evenly distribute. And I'm going to put in a number two for the number of copies I want to create. Now that I've loaded that value in there, as I come back over the center point of that molding, let's go ahead and pull this up. And again, I'm going to use the guideline of that angle right in that area right there where the riser ends and release my mouse. Let's zoom out a little bit and pan over. You can see that we have that right in this area right here. If you wanted to pull that back, let's hit the undo button and do it one more time. And since that molding actually is extruding on the outside of that when it makes the polyline a little bit larger, I'm just going to use the W key on the keyboard and I'm going to draw this line out about two inches and then let's use another guideline in here. We'll pick up the snap Again, let's select the raised panel, use the multiple copy, the interval is already set to two. And let's go ahead and slide this up until we're right on that edge. And again, making sure that the snap is on that center line for the guide. And now we've created that panel and now it's right in this area that we wanted. Now for the last paneling, let's just use a rectangular polyline. Let's come in here and again, I'm going to press the tab key change this from a polar dimension so I can come in. In this case I'm going to set this to be 26 by 32. Go ahead and highlight it and then I'm going to use that guideline with my snaps and go ahead and snap that right into location. We'll convert it to a 3D molding polyline and assign the same molding as the other ones. Let's replace the default, browse back out to the library and underneath of our chair rails we'll find the same molding and set it to be two inches by a half. And then a couple of final things. One, typically when you draw your stairs, you're not going to get a molding that's right above your landing. I'll use a polyline solid and usually draw those in. So just pick up our snap here, come down, and we'll go ahead and set this thickness to maybe a half inch. 
or whatever your molding typically is and then use the material eyedropper will pick up the color off of the stairs apply it onto that molding and then the final thing if you want a detailed section in here sometimes I'll just use the Crocs box tool and come in here and draw this where the uh, the landing actually is now let's use our camera view take a look inside of the design so I'm just gonna grab my camera and I'm gonna just kinda point and click up the stairway and we've created our raised panel wainscot in the stairway. Let's go ahead and toggle our camera on to the technical illustration. might be a little easier to see. And you can see that raised panel. I've also created a wainscot on the back wall with an inset panel. And let's move on to the last portion of the video and take a look if you want to have an inset molding on your wainscot. Back into the floor plan view, I've created a section view. Let's go ahead and open this up and take a look at it. You can see I've created a number of inset panels in here. First of all, the larger portion of this is a polyline solid. And then I drew a polyline solid on top of the panel, which would be represented by one of the small rectangles in here if I zoom in. And then I converted that to a hole and then created one more component of that and made it a 3D molding polyline. Let me take an elevation on the other wall and I'll show you the steps that I've done to create this. Using the back clip cross section view, let's just create a section right through this wall. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this area. And using the polyline solid, I'm gonna go ahead and create a polyline solid against this entire wall just to kind of make this pretty simple with the exception of the baseboard. This is create a solid in here and in this case I'm going to set this to be three quarters of an inch a little bit thicker than the other paneling and when you draw another polyline solid on top of another you can actually mark it as a hole so let's come down towards the uh, bottom section in here again let's just press the tab key and I'm going to set it to be 16 inches by 40 inches in this case that will create that rectangle that we're after and like I'd mentioned earlier if you select that inner polyline solid there's an option and you can mark one as a whole. It has to be fully contained in the outer polyline solid for that to work. Now you can use the temporary dimensions and exactly set that. In this case for this video I'm not going to really worry about positioning this to be perfect for this wall. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create a copy of that hole and I'm going to move it in concentrically and resize it two inches and I'm going to set my inset molding to be that two inch dimension and that way as you can see in this photo I can actually see that inset molding. Now to make this easy to create a concentrically resized rectangle that's two inches exactly I'm going to go into my preferences. Underneath the preferences in your edit area you can actually come in here in the behavior section and you can come in and set this to be concentric and set your information to be two inches and all of your copying will be concentric what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set it back to the default but the concentric value in here remains at two inches let's go ahead and close that dialog and reselect the hole that we have I'm gonna use the toolbar down here copy and paste in place and when I move my cursor over this edge, I'm going to hold the letter C down on the keyboard. That will force it to be concentric. And that will snap exactly in that increment we put on earlier. Now that I have a hole in a hole, let's go ahead and convert this to the 3D molding pylon that we did earlier. And let's choose to be the 3D molding and then assign the molding profile to it. Let's go ahead and hit replace, browse back out, and find that same molding that we've been using underneath the chair rail. And in this case, let's set it to also be the 2 inches, which is the distance we just copied it. And the default is 3 quarters of an inch, and that's what I want. You can see that molding in there. Now let me press undo on that. I kind of glossed over one of the steps. Let's get back to the point where I copy this again. So let's select the hole. Sometimes you have to press the tab key because it wants to select either the room or the other molding pylon. Using the copy and place tool, so it's copy and paste in place, come back over, position on one of the corners. I press the letter C for concentric on the keyboard and that snaps into the two inch increment and then down here in the toolbar button I click this twice really convert to a plain polyline once you do that you actually then see the other tool that comes up 
that will now allow you to convert it to the 3D molding pie line and then you go ahead and assign the molding profile to it as we did. Let me go ahead and just skip through this. Now to fill the wall with the wainscoting, I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to first select the hole. I'm going to use the multiple copy tool and for the interval, instead of evenly distribute, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set my primary offset of 24 inches and my secondary offset at 48 inches. My hole is actually 16 inches and by using a primary offset that's going to give me an 8 inch gap on the top and the bottom. Holding my right mouse button down and I'm going to keep it held down as I drag this out and then release it and then I'll slide my mouse up and then I'll left click to place all of those holes. Now come back over, let's select the 3D molding poly line. Again use the multiple copy tool, same values are loaded in there. I'm going to hold right mouse button down, release, slide my mouse up and left click. And the last thing I'm going to do is use my material eyedropper. We'll come in, pick up the color off of the base molding and apply that onto the larger polyline solid. Let's go into the camera view and take a look. And there we have our wainscot paneling on the back wall. Let's go ahead and toggle on our technical illustration camera and it gives you a little bit closer idea. We zoom in and you can see that paneling. A quick recap, we used the polyline solid tool to create our back paneling. We used the line tool for some guidelines. We converted that line to a 3D molding polyline, assigned the molding profile to it for the raised panel. And then for the inset panel, I used a polyline solid. I drew another polyline solid over the polyline solid and created it as a whole. And then I copied that concentrically, the size of the, the distance of the molding. And then I converted that to a 3D molding polyline and assigned the molding profile. Thanks for watching the video and I hope it helps you in creating your wainscoting for your stairways.